And both men are still going at it. Exactly right. A lot of weight in that ring rolling around there. There's the big A calling for. The type of action you see on WWE. That's exactly right. Can't be beat anywhere. Is he going for the big one? This could be the end. It's the deadly pile driver. The big A tries to. Oh, oh and here's the reverse by Red second. Eagle. Red Eagle once again reaches way down deep inside, pulls out that little bit of extra strength required to pull Annihilator look, look, over. Look, look. In an attempt to get Killer Tim Brooks into the ring to avenge an earlier incident that left Red Eagle out of wrestling for months, the new belt holder immediately offers a title match to the killer. Skandar Akbar right there to interfere in the match. These are grave times for the World Wrestling Empire as the money and power of Devastation Incorporated attempts to come into the World Wrestling Empire and alter history. Red Eagle having a lot of trouble trying to get into the ring. Referee Alan Lane orders Killer Brooks to a neutral corner. Bar being warned at ringside. There you have a shot of the general watching as Red Eagle rolls in underneath the bottom rope. Killer Brooks going with a series of boots to Red Eagle. Red Eagle totally or almost totally incapacitated at this point. No! No! Tim Brooks brings Red Eagle to his feet. Red Eagle trying to fight his way back with a couple of blows to the midsection of Killer Brooks. Big double axe handle to the head, follows it up with a nice punch and sends Brooks into the ropes. There's a whip. Oh, big boot by Red Eagle. Eagle with the body slam. Killer Brooks in trouble. Red Eagle off the ropes. Oh! Brooks with a big knee to the side of uh, the head of Red Eagle. Rolls him up. One, two, three. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Killer Brooks has just defeated Red Eagle for the World Wrestling Empire Heavyweight And finally, in an untelevised match, Red Eagle takes the belt from Killer Tim Brooks. The most popular man in the World Wrestling Empire now holds the heavyweight belt. Well, that about covers the heavyweights. We're going to get a word in from our sponsors, and we'll be right back with more of the best of the WWE. I'm The Ledge. Don't touch that dial. Need insurance if you have a car, boat, or motorcycle. Even if you have traffic tickets or a DUI. If you own a business, if you are a renter. Try us for insurance has been serving Oklahomans since 1951. We are property and casualty insurance specialists. Try us for insurance. An independent agent for property and casualty insurance. Try us for insurance. 831 North Sheridan, Tulsa. That's 834-5663. Research has shown that the most successful advertising campaigns combine print and broadcast media for a two-pronged approach. Broadcast generates the enthusiasm and desire and implants your business name in the mind of the consumer. Print media then works to give specifics and to get people in your door. If you've ever priced TV advertising, you know it can be expensive. Well, not anymore. Davcom Video and the WWE are looking for a few good sponsors. We own the airtime and can produce your spot ourselves so we can offer you an unheard of deal in TV advertising. And we'll work with your budget and cash flow, arranging payment schedules due monthly or even weekly if that works best for you. Interested? Call now and ask for our marketing director, Brenda Shanahan, for complete details. 918-749-9447. Welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire Year End Review. 
We're ready for the light heavyweight belt that halfway through 1995 was changed to the television title. The competition for this one was fierce as Renegade began the year holding the belt. Shane Cortez pushed him to fight, holding Renegade to the 30-day rule. He's hurting. I have as much right to defend that belt as he does. He can't do it, so I want to do it. Whoa, Flamin' Raymond says that since Renegade can't defend the belt, he wants to do it. I, I want to defend the belt. I want to defend the belt. I have as much right to that belt. I work just as hard to defend that belt. Look what he did to me. Look what he did to me. I am seriously fearing for the health and physical well-being of my friend Flamin' Raymond. Cortez could easily hurt this man and put him out of professional wrestling for good. All right, Raymond they're got getting a lot of ready. guts to be in there. Referee Doug McCoy checking over Flamin' Raymond. I've got the light heavyweight title right here in my hands. It's on the line. Raymond looks a little nervous there to me. Shane well, Cortez showing every bit of confidence. Wouldn't you be a little nervous if you were looking across the ring at that? The referee Doug McCoy has a few instructions for Shane Cortez. The crowd is Balls going the crazy bell. and there's the bell. Here we go, the crowd going crazy. Cortez kicks Raymond. Raymond. Oh, Shane reaches small package. small package. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Shane Cortez is the new World Wrestling Empire light heavyweight what champion. Is this man? What is this man? Several months later, Cortez defended the belt in a rematch against Renegade. In one of the hardest fought matches ever, Cortez kept the belt but paid a heavy oh, price. Oh, there, Renegade trying There's... to get a little revenge for that atomic oh, and drop. Oh, a back suplex, and Cortez landed on his head. That looked like that could have snapped his neck in half. Cortez appears to be injured. Oh, kick out on two by Shane Cortez. Incredible resilience by Shane Cortez. Cortez showing why he is the World Wrestling Empire light heavyweight champion. Yeah, that looks like it. He's flat on his face. Now I'm talking about the resilience oh, and sorry. stamina that I this digress. little guy brings to the ring. Looking, looking like a, he looks like a janitor now. He's sweeping the floor. Shane Cortez is really taking a beating at the hands of Flamin' Raymond and his wrestler Renegade. Now Renegade is basking in the noise. Cortez crawls into the ring underneath the bottom rope. I'm a little worried about the WWE light heavyweight champion. He's trying to clear his head. Renegade comes in, hits him hard with that closed fist. Puts him into the turnbuckles. Big chop, they're followed by another one. There's three. Three Renegade shots. Renegade at this point appears to pretty much have his way with Shane Cortez. Cortez down on hands and knees. Using more of a brawling style trouble. rather than technical expertise to defeat Shane Cortez. What, what beautiful, beautiful work by Renegade. Excellent work. Oh, a high five drop kick by Shane Cortez puts Renegade on the mat. Both men back Cortez to their feet. Able to get oh, no! Both men are down. Incredible match. You know, that Frankensteiner right there has been a trademark move for Cortez over the last few weeks. Cortez is not moving. Renegade's out. Cortez, he may have got the victory. Well, Cortez did recover and managed to fight off all challenges. That is until Skandar Akbar got involved when Cortez squared off again against Dirty Dan Wilder. On. I'll have to look at the tapes later. I didn't see what happened. Right now, we got Shane Cortez coming without back strong. His manager, coming back strong against manager. Dirty Dan Wilder. <laughs> We've just seen Steve Hartley carried from the building. I have no idea what happened. It looked like a fireball or something. Oh, and a big lariat sends Cortez backwards over the top rope. Cortez is up on the top. Oh, yes. Skandar 
Black Bar yes. interfered with the match. Cortez interfere. is hurt. One, yes. two, three. Oh, no, I can't believe what we've just seen. The Texas Dirty Dan Wilder have all the belts. They have all the belts. It's because of General down. Skandar Akbar is on the scene. I can't Cortez would not wait long for a rematch, however, as two weeks later we saw him in the squared circle once again facing Dirty Dan Wilder for the belts. Cortez has to be real careful with that neck. You know, I'll tell you what, Ledge, I don't care how much therapy you go through, that's nothing to mess with, a neck injury like that. Oh, Cortez flips out of the ring, comes back in on the top rope. Whoa. Totally by surprise. Small pack. Dirty Dan Wilder is able to get into the rope. Referee Doug McCoy orders the hold. Broken. Shane Cortez backs off. Oh, Cortez reaches in with the body slam. One. Kick out on two. You know, the thing is, people have to remember tonight, too. Shane Cortez isn't taking on just one guy. He's taking on three. That's right. This and young man's coming back against all kinds of odds. The injury, the, you know, three to one. Look at that. Shane Cortez has just defeated Dirty Dan Wilder for the WWE Heavyweight belt. Incredible rolled him up into a small package and held it. And our is a little bit disgusted. Cortez would face another challenge in the form of the mystery man. He would learn too late that the man he thought was his friend was under the mysterious mask. Looks very familiar. It sure does. Looks like they've just started this match without the bell. They were ready to go. Oh. Kind of a, a somewhat of a uh, uh, Boston Crab figure four leg lock combination is what it looks like. It's painful. It's like Cortez, of course, doing everything he can. Shane Cortez, this will injure the lower back immediately. Take a look at the, the man of the red mask. Now, isn't that the Red Rider? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Red Rider has a come up. The referee's call for the bell. Shane Cortez has given up. I don't know what's going on. Or he won't break the hole. Something between Alan Lane and the Mystery Man. Who is the Mystery Man? I mean, he, he looks familiar. And the Red Rider? Well, uh, the Red and Rider, that, Shane Is that Cortez. the same man that was wearing the red mask earlier? These people think. But Cortez would face Renegade once more for the title. At Fright Night Frenzy, he got a chance for some revenge on Renegade and on Raymond. Shane Cortez takes on the original Renegade and Flamin' Raymond. What a wrestler. Renegade into the ropes. There's a whip. This could, be, this, could be, this could be fatal for Shane Cortez. He doesn't know. Shane Cortez on the top ropes, really going after the original Renegade tonight. There he goes. Oh, oh ladies and gentlemen. Shane Cortez defeats the original Renegade for the World Wrestling Empire. 
the under. Television oh, belt. There goes Shane Cortez after his belt. So once again, this incredibly popular wrestler holds the TV title and carries it into 1996. We're going to carry that thought right to a commercial break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm The Ledge, and this is the World Wrestling Empire. Hey, all you viewers have never attended a WWE live event. What are you waiting for? Come on out to our next event, January 13th, 1996, at the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Mingo Valley Expressway. We have lighted parking, clean premises, family orientation, no alcoholic beverages or smoking allowed. Lots of good, clean fun for a nominal price. Where else can you kids go and spend an entire evening for only two bucks? And senior citizens are two bucks also. Regular tickets, only five bucks. So come out January 13th and see Red Eagle defend his title against the original Renegade. You'll have a good time. Honest. Promotional consideration provided by the following. Dabcom Video. Don't let your business be the best kept secret in town. Call Dabcom Video. Skyam Graphics. Proudly providing the World Wrestling Empire event program. Sir Knight Formal Wear. When you want to look right, Sir Knight. Try us for insurance. For your home, car, or business. We'd like to get to know you. Yes, we would. Call 274-9930 and answer a few questions, and we'll send you free passes to a future WWE live event. That's 274-9930. Operators are standing by. This next match does not have anything to do with belts, or even wrestling for that matter. We just liked it, and hope you do too. All the way down the line. I love the message on that shirt. I love it. I'm going to have to get that. Devlin rules. Devlin rules what? Devlin rules. Oh, Devlin oh. wants to rule. Devlin's trying to swing it. Doug oh. McCoy. Doug McCoy is too quick for him. Oh! oh this is so <laughs> Referee Doug McCoy is easily going to handle Devlin Blanchard. Now, but now Steve Harley is I can't trying to accuse What's referee Doug McCoy of throwing Devlin Blanchard out of the ring. Only because he won't play fair. Devlin Blanchard a little slow about, oh, Devlin's complaining about his lower rear end hurting just a little bit. Isn't well, that I think sad? He, I think he should. It's within his rights. Oh, please. You know, I, Devlin Blanchard is way out of his league here already. He is going to get whooped. Oh, the only thing he's out of his league oh, is. Referee Doug McCoy, Sean, he knows what's going on in the ring. Look at this. Oh. Hartley. That was decidedly that was a, a three count. That was a very fair two count. That, two. That was a three count. It Steve Hartley count. needs to pull his head out of whatever clouds they're in. His arm got tired and slipped. Devlin Blanchard moves in on Doug McCoy. Puts his neck on the ropes. He's trying to... I, I can't see that? from here. I, I think he's just trying to tear the face off of Doug McCoy. Or, uh, I don't Whatever know what it's worth. in. The referee, Steve Hartley, is way out of line on this one. He's I letting the two-man fight as out. Biased and official, and official as I have ever seen. Right, by letting them fight it out like they're supposed to. Referee Doug McCoy able to kick out from underneath Devlin Blanchard. To Look that. Really taking a beating at the hand of Devlin Blanchard, especially in the light of the fact that he is allowed to get away with uh, just whatever well, he wants time, to guys. by Steffery, referee Steve Hartman. Oh, oh, come on, there's no way to get out of that. That's yeah. over, baby. Oh, it's oh, this is pathetic. You know, I can't believe. That's right, that's After all this time about. in this match, you know, they've allowed Steve Harley into the ring to ruin the company. Oh! You know, would you look at the way the guy is counting? You know, he, what, what's wrong with it? Well, you know, he's, he's, it's supposed to be, those counts are supposed to be a second to a second and a half apart by law, and those were about three and one second. You're doing great, buddy. Keep it up. I 
want to see this raw ledge. I mean, you can't just bring this up. I want that. I'm just saying there's a specific period that that count is supposed to take place in, and referee Steve Harley does not care. Well, maybe that's an amendment. He's not aware of it. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. Definitely the ledge is really beating up. up. Oh! Referee Doug McCoy rolls out from in the, underneath the elbow drop, and it looks like Devin Blanchard suffered a little bit of pain on that one. Uh, a victim of his own bad mood. Oh, reverse it. I like it. Uh oh. Oh! Chris fixed by Doug McCoy. Oh, Rose oh, Devil on, up. He's in the ropes. And the payback for that match warmed all our hearts. Service industry. Yeah. I'm not a servant. You are today, so you take yourself around to the side, like the rest of my servants. All right, let's, let's just get this over with. What do you want me to do first? Well, I told you first, I want you to go put on your uniform for the day. Oh boy, I get to dress like a sweet transvestite. That's right. I think the people will love to see you dressed up the way you really look. I'm not going to dress in front of you. I'll be thank back. God. Get in here and get this floor vacuum. This is not ever going on the air. I can tell you that right now. What is this? Yeah, he's still complaining about it. Now, what do you want me to do? Hey, get this floor vacuum. How? How? Get the vacuum cleaner right there. Sir. <laughs> Here you go, coffee, nice and hot. Drink up, it's good for you. Well, you know, you're looking awful hot and tired from work you've been doing. I'm gonna give you a break and let you have a coffee. Oh, right, I don't, go I, ahead. No, no, I don't drink coffee. Go ahead. You no, have it. I don't no, drink coffee. I want you to drink this coffee. I'm good. This is your next job. I want to clean. Clean? You want me to clean? You expect me, the prince, to clean a toilet? Yeah. With what? My hands? No, no. I want you to clean it with this. A toothbrush. That's right. in your diet. <laughs> McCoy, what do you want me to do with this? Wash them. Wash them. I don't do dishes. I've already shoved my hand on the throat of your toilet. I don't do dishes. Do dishes. Clean the toilet with a toothbrush. Hey, Francis, have a nice day. Shh. Rot. Go rot. Oh, wait. Where's my limo? My limo's not here. Oh, man, my limo's not here. Oh, man, I'm sorry. My phone just went down. Can't get a call out to anywhere. I don't know what to you're going to do. I have no idea. You have to do that. Hi, I'm Glenn DeWeese, the owner of Davcom Video and the director of tonight's show. And this is the edit suite where we put it all together. You know, it's a proven fact that people who both see and hear information 
remember significantly more than people who only see or hear it. Recent advances in video technology have brought high quality video within the reach of even the smallest business or organization. If you have a video need for anything from large multi-camera shoots from cheerleading competitions to professional wrestling, or perhaps you want to showcase your product in a trade show or create a training video for your employees, DAVCOM Video offers turnkey production from scripting to making your copies. And we'll work with your budget to give you the best video product your money can buy. Call us now, 749-9447. References available on request. Come do the Tomahawk Chop with us. The first event of 1996 has been changed to Saturday, January 13th. It's Indian versus Indian as heavyweight champion Red Eagle puts his belt on the line against the original Renegade. There may be blood, but that won't make them blood brothers as Red Eagle is tired of being jumped from behind by Renegade. Don't miss it. That's Saturday, January 13th, the National Guard Armory, 4200 North Bingo Valley Expressway. Doors open at 7 o'clock, bell time at 8 o'clock. World Wrestling Empire, be there. We'd like to get to know you. Yes, we would. Call 274-9930 and answer a few questions, and we'll send you free passes to a future WWE Live event. That's 274-9930. Operators are standing by. Welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire Year in Review. After all that silliness with Devlin Blanchard, it's time to look at the tag team belts. 1995 started out with the Texas Outlaws holding the tag team belts, and they were not amused with the results of this match against the Hillbillies from Mule Shoe, Texas. The scum. The scum. You don't know who you can trust anymore. At least with the Texas Outlaws and Akbar, you know what you're putting in with. Yeah, don't turn your back. <laughs> you know, you know that coming in. Uh, but for a man to turn on his friend. And they've been friends for years. The Outlaws make the tag. They throw Dynamite Daryl into the corner. Oh, and toss a crazy Carl into him. Oh, Daryl hits. Oh, Daryl hits. They're all in the ring now. Uncle Dog, Bone Crusher, Crazy Carl, and Dirty Dan Wilder duking it out in the ring. Daryl right? is out on the apron. He is hurt. That was a. That was a. The Outlaws are taking it to the Hillbillies right here. They're bringing in the Cowbells. They're going after We're the Hillbillies. Get or somebody Hill out here. So. The Hillbillies come with some nice headbutts. Boom! They go after the Outlaws with those Cowbells. They're rolling him over and going for the pin. Will the referee be able to get Wait, up the top? Wait, here comes the point. Oh! The oh. heavyweight champions, the new heavyweight champions, the Hillbillies from Mule Shoe, Texas. Uncle Dog and Crazy Carl. The Hillbillies held out for some time. That is, until they met the challengers from the jungle in this match. Leopard Man once again moves in on Uncle Dog. They got some kind of foreign object on Uncle Dog. What Leopard are you Man are using some kind of foreign object to choke Uncle Dog. Where did, what? Where Leopard did you Doug see McCoy that? Leopard is totally out of position. He didn't see the choke by Leopard Man. <laughs> Leopard Man over trying to accuse the hillbillies of something. I don't know where that, it looked like a piece of wire or something. I don't know where it came from. How does he accuse, how does he even speak? Oh, and Crazy Carl gets it again. Donk is barely after. moving. Crazy Carl. Donk can't seem to get to his feet. He reaches for the ropes. The hillbillies are in trouble. Leopard Man using some kind of a wire to choke Uncle Donk. What are you talking about? He's not choking him, it's a nerve hold. It's legal. They roll it. They roll Uncle Donk over. Leopard Man's got the pin. Here comes Crazy Carl to rescue his partner. Yes, Uncle Donk is there not moving. There goes the Hillbillies. Uncle Donk is One, out. Two, three. We have new champions. Let, ladies and gentlemen, the Hillbillies from Mule Shoe, Texas, and have just comes, been defeated here comes by Leopard Raymond Man. With the, with the belts. The belts. Flamboyant Flamin' Raymond's Leopard Men held onto the belts for a short time before being upset by the underdogs, is, the Military the Express. Man? That's a good question. I can't believe he would desert his partner like that. They're usually a tight unit. 
Well, so far, the Leopard Man is off to a good start. Leopard Man seems to be handling. He, he's manhandling the Military Express. I, I've, I've got all the confidence in the world in him. I believe he's going to take care of it by, all by himself. But again, no he's problem. one man, Scott Summers. How can one man defeat two men? It's easy. You don't let the man tag. You keep the man from tagging, and you shouldn't have any problem. Some advice from the serpent, Scott Summers. Maybe you can get up there and be the manager for the uh, Military Express. How would you like to do that? Would you like to be the Military Express manager? Oh, come on. Give me a break. That's all I'd ask. If I was going to manage wondered. anybody, I'd want to manage somebody that at least won a match. I'm telling you, the Military Express, look at that. Double clothesline by the Military Express on the Leopard Man. But if you see, if he lets him continue to tag like this, if he lets the Military Express tag, he's going to become tighter and tighter and tighter. He's got to come up with some kind of offense to slow this thing down and keep one man in the ring. The Sergeants with a double elbow. See, they're doing it all within the legal parameters, Scott Summers. Out by the count of five. Legal. Yes, it's legal. Oh, DDT! Where are these moves coming from? One, two, three! We have new world movements for tag team champions. I can't believe it! The Military Express met reality a short time later, however, in the persona of the bad boys. Sure get your clothes clean. So that man is pure raw energy, no right doubt. Right now, Sergeant Todd is in a lot of trouble in the ring. Carl Danzig of the bad boys steps in. The bad boys very serious about Whoa. their efforts. Oh, man. Huge, hurt. huge DDT by Carl Danzig. Bad boys very serious about their efforts to... Uh, attain the goal of World Wrestling Empire Tag Team Champions. This will be the toughest challenge to date for the Military Express. They won the title from one Leopard Man. They were definitely at an advantage. Then they uh, had a non-title match just a few weeks ago. Who were they against a couple of weeks ago? I don't even remember. The, the Express or the Bad Boys? The Military Express. Remember right off I don't either, but it was a tainted it. victory, nonetheless. They won. Not yeah. Tainted about that. Look at this. Oh, power slam. Crow, we got all four did. men in the ring. Whoa, here went Hartman over the top rope, courtesy Brett Knight. Doug McCoy didn't see it. Sergeant Todd in a lot of trouble against the bad here boys. Here it is. Right now. Oh. Seek and destroy. Oh, the bad boys taking it to Sergeant That's Todd. That's it. Military Express. One. Two and three new tag team champions. Yeah, yeah, just it, like that. Gentlemen, I would have never expected that to turn out like Ray Devlin. Where is With the belts in the hands of Silverado and the Bad Boys, the World Wrestling Empire saw one of the greatest rivalries in professional wrestling develop between the Bad Boys and the Texas Outlaws. In this title match, the Bad Boys won, but it took everything they had and more. They are slugging it out, lads, after doing their best. Oh, oh whip into the road. Oh, a big tremendous knee. clothesline. My goodness, lads. He was kicked in the back, but he took a clothesline. Oh, and I'll tell you, the bad boys right now are showing all the signs of a championship quality tag team, but the bone crusher comes back. Oh. Double leg drop across the midsection. That was a tremendous move, lads. To come back after that, Bobby Burns is in tremendous shape. Drags Kroll Danzig into the outlaw corner. Sets him up on the ropes. Bone Crusher going for the guillotine. Referee telling him to break. There's a five count, let's to break the hold. All right, Bone Crusher doesn't allow the five count to go long. Moves right back in, and uh, Kroll Danzig is in a lot of trouble right now. Kroll Danzig is not where he wants to be now, Ledge. He's in the outlaw's corner. Bad, bad place to be at this point. Yes, oh, there's, oh. Oh, there's a big reverse. The referee, Alan Lane, gets slammed into the turnbuckles. The referee was caught in the middle, Ledge. He was getting the other man out, and Bobby Burns ran into him. Bone crusher Bobby Burns there to check on uh Oh, the re what's this, Ledge? What's the bad boys have gotten a chair into the ring. Oh. He just went after Dirty Dan. Oh. Now he's going after the Bone Crusher. And My Dirty goodness, Dan, Ledge. They're beating the Texas Outlaws with yes, a chair. He is. He's going berserk on the outlaws. The referee, Alan Lane, hasn't seen what's going on. One, two. There he is. Go, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Oh, my oh, goodness. The bad boys have just defeated the Texas outlaws. Boy, they did. It 
didn't take long to set a rematch, however, and this was one that will never be forgotten. Injured that hand a little bit against the forehead of uh, Brett Knight. Dirty Dan taking it to Brett Knight. Mm. Oh, that right there will help your back tremendously. I bet that felt Ouch. good. My goodness. <laughs> Ouch. These men are brawling, Leds. They're just taking, letting all things come out tonight. Texas Outlaws now seem to be in control of this match. There's, There's the bone crusher ringside working over Brett Knight. Pro Danzig comes over with so. Oh, my goodness. There's that briefcase again, Leds. This is getting ridiculous. Big blow. My Big blow. Goodness. We can't have this out here, Leds. Hope this man is fined heavily. It's chaos. The referee is losing control of the match. The Silverado, somebody must have tagged him, looks like. Silverado is down. The Outlaws and the Bad Boys are slugging it out outside the ring. They are, legs. One man must be back in the ring. They're going to be counted out if they don't return. Referee Allen Lane right there in the middle of it. The referee counting these men, it looks like, Ledge. He has Fight lost is all broken control. out. Referee has lost all control of this match, Ledge. He don't know who is legal and who is not legal. My goodness. Referee Allen Lane is in the ring administering the 10 count. Oh, head first into the concrete. Oh. That hurt, that hurt his back as Ouch. much as it hurt him. My goodness. Seven. These men Everybody's have Everybody's no... outside the ring. Oh, Bobby Burns says hello with the cowbell. There you have it, referee Allen Lane has just ordered the bell ring. It's a double count out. The Outlaws and the Bad Boys, the belt will not change hands. The Bad Boys remain as the World Wrestling Empire Tag Team Champions. Great. So in spite of a valiant effort by the Texas Outlaws, we go into 1996 with the Bad Boys at the World Wrestling Empire Tag Team Champions. Well, hey, we need to take a break here and sell some stuff. Stay away from that refrigerator. It'll make you fat. We'll be right back. Conley's is expanding. No, not Jimmy, the showroom. To make more room for all your appliance needs. We've expanded our lines of new furniture with Washington Dykes and Seville. And as always, we have a full line of quality pre-owned appliances. So whether you need a refrigerator, stove, washer, dryer, TV, or VCR, come to Conley Appliances and either purchase or rent to own. And don't forget our service after the sale. Come by Conley's on the corner of 49th West Avenue and Charles Page Boulevard and see our expanded showroom. And remember, Vern Jewelry is still next door. Promotional consideration provided by the following. Conley Appliances, home of service after the sale. Radio City CB, the place for CBs and accessories. Dolphin Manufacturing, proud builders of the World Wrestling Empire set. DJ's, 4405 South Peoria, Tulsa's smallest store. Break one nine for a lonely trucker. Can anyone copy? How about you? Guys, where do you go when you just got to get on that channel? Calgary. Try Radio City CB. Radio City has Where's new grant, unit and Galaxy and Cobra radios, fire stick and hustler antennas, and they're an authorized Wilson dealer. Mama got you on a budget? Radio City has a large selection of pre-owned radios for anyone's pocketbook. Whether it's installation, service, or just the rock bottom prices, the next time you just got to get through, think Radio City CB. In the northwest corner of the parking lot, Bruce's Hello? truck stop, 161st and Skelly Drive. Out there. Welcome back to the World Wrestling Empire. Well, that about does it for the belts. Now hold on while we give you a whirlwind tour through some of the other special moments of 1995. Goes in with the big boot. Now TJ still is in trouble in the ring. It is definitely heating up. A lot of guys are gunning for the beast. And the heavyweight title in the World Wrestling Empire carries a lot of prestige. Of course, the man with the gold makes the most money. And that's the goal right here for Annihilator tonight. All right, and right now the crowd is rocking the building, trying to encourage TJ still to come to his feet. In the meantime, Annihilator follows up with a good hamstring stretch, snaps that leg over. You know, that move right there can cause a lot of injury to that ball joint in your hip. Could permanently injure a wrestler, but right now TJ is showing some strength and stamina of his own as he comes to his feet and goes after Annihilator. Steele is going to have to watch his moves real quick, real close. Oh, 
TJ still oh throws the Nightmare into the ropes and the ring breaks. They just, no, the they just snap the ring. That is so much beef. There's the a whip off the ropes. Predator reverses the whip. Oh, runs at the turnbuckle, misses. Shane Cortez drops to his knees. Predator goes over the top rope. Cortez is coming over. Cortez We're right out here in front of us. Predator. Right there, Predator is laid flat out. Cortez, Cortez has got amazing resilience. Now pinfalls in this match. Got his Will second win. anywhere in the building. This is right here in front of us, Ledge. I don't like this. Well, I bet Predator's not gonna like this because we're watching Shane Cortez get a fistful of chain and drive it into his head. Oh, oh no, not out here on the, the concrete. Suplex. Oh. Oh. oh, Cortez gets reversed. it. Predator throws Shane Cortez in a suplex at his solid concrete down there on that floor that Shane landed on. Throws him back into the ring underneath the bottom rope. <laughs> Spot kick by Predator sends Scott Summers to the mat. Raymond bragging that uh, Leopard Man is going to come in and what, clean up. Is that the is, was that the word he used? Yeah, I believe that's what he wants. Not the trash. No, I, uh, I think there could stand to be a little sweeping or cleaning. But I don't think that, uh, on the part of uh, Predator and Look Leopard Man that it needs to be done. Scott Double Summers teaming. drives him into the corner, makes the tag. Tennessee Rebel in now against Predator. You know, the Southern Express are really good at avoiding and evading that five count by the referee. They've got five count to get in there and do the dirty work of double team. And they are good. I mean, they are top notch at using that five count to their advantage. And then Predator reaches in for the roll up, goes for the pin, not able to pull it off. Tennessee Rebel kicks out on two and comes right back at him. He's in the wrong corner right now. All right, let's see if Leopard Man's going to take out the trash. Oh. 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 Is this pinfalls count everywhere? Or is, is that... Yeah, I think pretty much. No DQ or anything. Shane Cortez inside the ring. Renegade is stuck outside the ring with both of the bad boys. I didn't hear at the beginning of the show. Are the tag titles on the line? No, no, they are not. No, they are not. This is basically a grudge match between these two groups. Renegade grabs another chair. Boom! The bad boys are taking a beating tonight. Good things come to those who wait, okay? Uh, That's what's gonna happen here. So as the match so goes saying, on, as Red Eagle waits to take on Annihilator, it will shift to Red Eagle's advantage. Good no, things come to those who I wait. I would say that Annihilator is tuning himself up so that he can crush Red Eagle with the same force that he's crushing Tim Zane. Well, I'm, That's what Thank I'm you saying. for clearing that up for me. I really appreciate that. And I want to say something right now, Ledge. We're not hearing any more beer and peanut butter jokes, all right? Or hey, we're going to be out here feeding Silverado's you beer and Silverado's the one that put, the, put him on the beer and peanut butter diet. I, I Drop didn't it, have Ledge. anything to Drop do with it. it. What oh. was that? What was that? Good move by T-Town. Annihilator slides the show off for the crowd. T-Town reaches in, grabs the leg. Where's that little runt going now? Trouble. Where's that little runt going now? Tim Zane is on the top row. Oh, oh nice what was that? Move. He hit him in the back of the head with something, Ledge. With his R-Y-T-T-R-E-O. He hit him in the back of the head with something. Look at him, he put it in his tights. Unbelievable. Great Bolo with some punishing, punishing moves against Michael The Rock Johnson. Oh, yeah. Drives that head into that turnbuckle. Michael oh. the Rock Johnson, not quite sure how seeing, injured he is. I think he's seeing a little blood in there, Ledge. Is that is that what's wrong with his face there, Ledge? A little bit of something right there. A little bit of something. A little something there. Oh, oh, oh nice move elbow. by the Rock. Comes back. Oh, with the big elbow. slam! I can't oh. believe he gets him up. He gets him up every time, Ledge. Big body slam by Michael oh, Bolo's in a world of hurt now. He's in trouble. 
Look out, Bolo. Rock goes Look to out, the Bolo. top rope. He's on the top. This could be the finishing move, the moonsault. There oh, it is. There it went. Come on, One, kick out, Bolo. Kick out. Two, three. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Michael The Rock Johnson defeats the great Bolo with the moon. <laughs> On behalf of the World Wrestling Empire and Davcom Video, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to the World Wrestling Empire in 1995. We look forward to seeing you here every week in 1996. Also, remind you, if you want to write to the World Wrestling Empire, that's P.O. Box 593, Owasso, Oklahoma, 74055. Don't forget, bloodbaths and battles of the World Wrestling Empire going on sale in the first part of January. Write in to get a reservation for that one. It'll be a great one. Kayla, bye-bye. Daddy loves you. We'll see you next year right here on the World Wrestling Empire. The World Wrestling Empire and DAVCOM partners in bringing you world-class professional wrestling entertainment.